Almighty, you've been very quiet. Oh, Aaron was saying how uh, even the scientists on the panel are at a relative disadvantage if they are not accustomed to the front lines of YouTube and the debate between uh, you know, creationists and uh, evolutionists. But the thing is, that goes many times over for our opponents. And, and that was uh, indicative of the fact that uh, you had so many people on the creationist side in general, but so few speakers. There was such a bottlenecking uh, of their representation. And I think we're going to find this every time because the, even the junk science, even the pseudoscience that these people spew is still above the heads of the people on their side of the debate. You know, I had someone uh, in, in real life, and you know, when you, when you argue this stuff in real life, they're just terribly under-equipped. You almost immediately feel bad for them because they just don't know how to handle themselves. I had a, a real-life person who, who's not a, a, like a, a staunch creationist, but you know, they're just one of those people like Aaron talks about, you know, takes so many things in the Bible for granted, never really thought about their faith and all this business. And they repeated something that they had heard, saying, well, uh, Darwin's theory doesn't adequately explain the fossil record. And I said, well, if the Bible was accurate, there wouldn't be a fossil record. And furthermore, if the Bible's accurate and there was a flood, uh, it, it got around to the, the flood and ev oh, the, the creatures that went extinct all drowned. And I said, well, why did the trilobites all drown? They lived at the bottom of the ocean in the first place. And I thought it was a good line, but she didn't know what a trilobite was. I also have to bring up one other, first, one other thing that, that follows along that same point. One of the guys that was that was sent by the creationist organizations to represent them, to speak on their behalf, um, did not, had not apparently ever heard the word Archaeopteryx before, and didn't know what it was, and he's the speaker, he's the one giving the testimony, and he, and he read stumbling three times trying to pronounce the word Archaeopteryx. <laughs> Um, right, we're going to we're going to we're going to bring it we're going to bring it back on topic, um, which is accommodate or confront. Um, let's say we'll start with concordance on this one, and then we'll start taking All some right. callers. So the the what inspired this, and I think it's a topic that we need to talk about, is um, which approach is most productive. And I think we've got all sides represented here. I consider myself a little bit of an accommodationist. I I think that we sometimes lose focus on the ultimate goal, which isn't the elimination of, well, in my view, my goal is not the elimination of religion from the earth. I think it's much more important that we overcome those differences with other people and focus more on the things we have in common. The goal ultimately needs to be rationality, logic, critical thinking, and I think the rest of it will follow. But I think if we focus on sort of an us versus them confrontation style uh, proselytizing, then I think that that undermines the ultimate message, which is we all have brains, let's use them. Uh, even though that's, that's the effect we're targeting, I think a lot of people are coming at it the wrong way. Uh, and I wanted to hear any counter arguments. I, again, I think we kind of have all views represented here. Well, I want, I, want, I want to just throw in my tuppence worth first, and then we'll, I'd say we'll, we'll take the views of the others. Um, I think, um, in my view, there can be a... If, if your aim is to try and get people to think um, and to wean them off um, religion, I think there are a number of different methods that could be appropriate. That said, when... Um, you consider, and I was thinking this as I watched Nonstop Collector's latest video on Noah's Flood, which are absolutely outstanding. If you haven't seen them yet, you should do. And it just struck me, you know, why should I have any respect or regard for anyone that actually genuinely believes in the Noah Flood account? They are worthy of ridicule, aren't they? And my second point is just this. I mean, what we were talking about before about the Texas Board of Education, how can you seek to accommodate um, Christianity or, uh, or any religion when they are seeking to undermine the very educational structure of the country or the state. Those are my two points. Who wants to go first? Okay, well, I will match your, I'll match your tuppence worth with my Indian head nickel. Um, I, I've recently gotten a bunch of emails from somebody who, who wants me to believe and, and expects that he can convince me that humans were created not by a god but by diapsid reptiles assuming human shape and they have left this planet to move to a planet out, out somewhere in the uh, the Sirius star system and have returned 
to uh, to assume human forms and to, I, I, yeah, I know it's it's V all over again. But it, this guy is is arguing that this is this is the actual plan and that he can convince me of this. And he he's berating me because I don't take him at face value on all the ridiculous absurdities that he wants to spew. I give benefit of the doubt where I can imagine that there is some that anybody could reveal a truth as yet unknown and it could be a devastating truth I mean like once upon a time somebody found a, a stone in the shape of a tooth in their yard and it was it, that was the first glimpse that we ever had into the world of dinosaurs a world we now know to be real but if you were to do, have described all that at the time of its discovery in the 1830s it would have been completely preposterous I grant that great preposterous things may be revealed we may discover whole new realms that we couldn't imagine now and any, and that information could come from anywhere so I'm completely open-minded about it however we're talking about people that say based on this evidence this is what I propose might be true completely open to that even if they suspect based on no evidence that such and such thing might be true I'm completely open to that but when they state that regardless of evidence such and such is definitely true that's the problem and that's where it becomes religion because religion makes statements of fact that are not evidently true and that's where my problem with it lies I cannot respect unjustified assertions in that manner and treat them as if they were justified either honestly with a with simple admission that this is just what I believe or this is merely an opinion or you know I suspect this for no no particular reason at all those beliefs I can respect better but when you state this is the absolute truth no it's not and you're lying to me and I've just lost all my respect for your position and I can't pretend to have it anymore almighty and then we'll take the first caller well, the beginning of my uh, disagreement with uh, Concordance, who's clearly playing devil's advocate here, I think that by the end of the day we're going to fuck him up even worse than we did Hamza. Uh, but, you know, I, I keep up with foreign news, and in response to Concordance saying he doesn't want to completely eliminate uh, uh, religion, uh, all I can say is uh, I absolutely do. I, I realize that it is, uh, for practical purposes, an impossible goal. There will always be some small group of holdouts but you know when you when you read about a group of Shia Iraqis Muslims celebrate well, celebrating commemorating the death of Imam Hussein when he was butchered at the Battle of Basra so they're in Basra they're out in the streets with their infant children in their arms cutting their heads with machetes and then smearing the blood from their heads on the heads of their children or some of them some of the more zealous ones even cutting the heads of their children so you have this you know good wholesome family fun as all these people are dripping in their own blood and it's already this horrible image and then someone from the other sect the Sunnah majority sect sets off a bomb in the vicinity killing everyone within 50 yards and injuring people with everyone within 100 yards so the paramedics show up to save people and they don't know who's injured because everyone was covered with blood to begin with so then they quickly try to sort through to find out who is actually injured in the bomb blast and needs the medical attention and then a second bomb goes off that was deliberately delayed so that it would catch the arriving paramedics in the blast so <laughs> you know it's not cute anymore I want to see all religion especially Christianity and Islam scraped from the bottom scraped off the face of the earth like shit from the bottom of a shoe I mean one can assume from your avatar um, that uh, and from your words that you are a confrontationalist I think um, should we take uh, Carter welcome to the show hello um, my question for today is uh, what are each of your super objectives what is it that you guys want to accomplish well I think I've just expressed mine I, I want uh, I want to keep you know you know, freedom of thought freedom of religion I actually do support those however religion I want to I want to keep a freedom of belief you're welcome to believe whatever the hell you want and you're welcome to say whatever you want even when I personally find it offensive I, I'm I want to support that and I think everybody should have that However, I have problems with religion stating as fact what is not actually fact. I think that there should be rules against, you know, overt dishonesty in public media when it's taken to be true and it and it actually is deceptive. 
in that context because it is being taken as true. I think that there needs to be some controls on that. Uh, you know, as I said before, completely eliminating religion uh, is most likely impractical. There will always be some group that practices it somewhere, no matter how small, no matter how little uh, influence they have. Uh, my somewhat more realistic, albeit still ambitious, goal is to reduce all religions to the status of like Hellenic polytheism. You know, we people still talk. You know, people talk with very little passion typically about. Zeus and Hera and you know things like this and uh, my my goal is what I'd like to see is all of them reduced to artifacts of history and literature and nothing more not playing any role in people's day-to-day -day lives yeah I, I mean mine's not that far away I, I just again I, I think that my ultimate goal is that kids in school learn critical thinking they they learn to apply rational skepticism to oh, and the Oh, and can you mute your microphone if you're going to type? Sorry. Sorry, go on, cool, cool. That, that um, I'm not even really all that concerned with what people believe. If they believe in unicorns or fairies or teapots or the flying spaghetti monster or, or Jehovah or whatever doesn't bother me. Their outward actions can bother me. You know, their violence or their... Um, abuse of their children or how they oppress another group because they feel uh, that they are lesser people. That Those are all very important issues, but people's personal beliefs, so long as they stay personal, are not my ultimate goal. My ultimate goal is about people's ability to examine their own beliefs and to think rationally about the things that they do in the world, to think about the consequences of their actions. Um, and to care if their beliefs are true. Um, and whatever conclusion they come to is fine with me. I'm much more concerned that people learn how to arrive at answers than the answers they arrive at. Yeah, well, the, the statement you just made about caring about whether your beliefs are true, that's, that's really the crux of it, isn't it? Yeah. I think the crux of it is the matter of... Uh, Okay, you, you draw a distinction between their inward beliefs and their outward actions. Uh, I, I just, I don't buy that anymore. It, it's like giving a, a mental patient a machine gun and saying, you're, you're okay if he has it as long as he doesn't shoot anyone with it. Uh, you know, I think that time and time again we've seen that re religious groups are just not capable of the self-control to keep their beliefs to themselves. It, it invariably becomes a problem. You get, you get a group of people organized and in some way, shape, or form, they're... You know, they're, they're, they're making the claim that there are these spiritual forces and gods and these divine authorities commanding them to do something and then rationalizing their, rationalizing their way out of doing the things that they're commanded to do. That kind of a system can only hold for so long. You know, I mean, like, the, 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 there will be some offensive passage in the Bible and the Quran, and then a Christian or Muslim will say, yeah, but we don't all do that. And, and yes, yeah, some of them do, but they're paradoxically not true Christians or Muslims because they're actually following the word of God and we're not, which I've, I don't know how they wrap their heads around that one. But, you know, you get a group of people, let's say that we worship the shin kicker God, and he, and he, he has a, he says, I am the Lord. When you greet someone, kick them in the shin. And you go up and, you know, and at first everybody's kicking other, each other in the shin. And then over time, over time, you know, it gets a, it becomes a little bit softer. It becomes a, you know, people say, well, it really means a figurative kick in your metaphorical shin. And so it's pretty soon you have a population of people who all worship the shin kicker god, but nobody actually does it. Well, it's only a matter of time before this activity revives itself. It only, it's only a matter of time before someone within that sect says, look, our scripture says kick people in the shin. Why aren't we doing it? It's just a, a, a landmine waiting for someone to step on it. Carter, let's go back to you first and then see where we go. What, what have you got to say so far? Uh, nothing. That was basically my question. I just wanted to know where each of you guys stand. Like, what is it you guys want from, I guess, life? But more well, so than that, what do you want from uh, our planet? I haven't thrown in my tuppence worth. Um, I think that um, the promotion of tolerance uh, is very important. Um, I similarly, uh, with a number of other people have uh, already commented, I, I don't really have any problem with what anyone 
believes. What I do have a problem with is though is when they seek to impose that, um, or elected officials seek to use religion on the for the basis of making decisions or for what children are going to be taught. Um, but I mean, if you if you wanted one, I would say as a, the the promotion of tolerance. Without tolerance, we are doomed. I suspect we're pretty much doomed anyway, as a as a species and as a race. But um, without tolerance, we'll it'll just happen a little bit quicker.